Talking Afternoon Live. Our next guest says the starting point to establishing a bond with your doctor and good health for yourself is to practice communication, trust, respect, and empathy. We welcome the author of Bond, the Four Cornerstones of a Lasting and Caring Relationship with Your Doctor. Dr. Ken Redcross is back with us. Dr. Ken, so good to see yes. you again. Oh, thank you, Kara, for having me back on. Hello, everyone. Oh, you always have the most wonderful tips, and this one's really important. You know, you talk about having that lasting, caring relationship with your doctor. Why is that so important for people? You know, you know that's so important, not only just for our general happiness, but also for our health care outcomes to be where they need to be. And right now, Kara, in health care, we know that everything is really about this speed and this volume, but really, it should be about value and that relationship and bond, which is so, so important. How do you know when you found the right doctor for you? Does it take actually getting to know your doctor as well? Or, I mean, I feel like the appointments are so short, so that by the time you go in and really want to spill so much, it's kind of yeah. like, oh, I don't even know anything about my doctor. No, you're right. And look, one of, the, one of the important things I always talk about, go in and see what your gut sort of tells you. Are you getting eye contact? Are you getting someone who's listening to you? You know, it's a reason why the good Lord gave us two ears and one mouth. I always say, right, we're supposed to be listening. So see if your doctor is actually giving you that sort of thing, which is important. Even at the beginning, you can see those sort of signs early. I know that people need to take care of their own health. And so then when they go in there, you know, you need to be ready. And because I said, there's like such that short amount of time. What yeah. should we be focusing on when we go in? All right, so look, the important thing is think about your doctor's appointment to make sure that it's a high yield appointment. It's a proactive thing. You don't just go in and just say, hey, I have my appointment and then go about your merry way. No. So let's make sure you do three things. Number one, I want you to make sure you make a list before you get in there because when you get in there, like you said, Kara, it's so fast. So it's easy to forget kind of why you went, especially if you're feeling a little better. So make a list so that you make sure that it's really targeted. The second thing, repeat what you hear. They do all these studies and they show that unfortunately patients typically leave and they only remember about 20% of what the doctor said and those studies also show most of it's wrong. So you wanna make sure you repeat it. And the last thing, you wanna make sure you ask questions. We remember this for years, even when we were little kids, they always say there's no such thing as a dumb question. And that's even more important when you're talking about your health and you're trying to get to that healing path. So you have to feel comfortable also to ask questions. I think a lot of people get shy when it comes to coming clean with the doctor, right? About certain issues or things going on. What advice do you have to those people who are a little hesitant? Well, look, it's a little challenge. There were some things that's really been going on during the pandemic. And you're right, coming clean is one of the important ones, right? When you talk about some people started to drink, some people started to feel more depressed, some people started to feel isolated. These are things you have to come clean to your doctor about. The other thing that I found that patients had a hard time talking about was that vaccine question, right? Mm -hmm. Whether the vaccine is good for me or not good for me and how do we deal with it? And so the good thing is that we can talk about things that are helpful um, as far as for the coronavirus, such as vitamin D and the importance of it for our immunity. Those are things that we could talk about, understanding that you have to know your vitamin D levels. You need to make sure they're between 40 and 60. These are things that I was able to talk about, Kara, when we had this vaccine question and how can I stay healthy until I kind of figure it out. No, and it's true about the COVID vaccine. You know, some people might be hesitant to go in and share their true feelings around it with their doctor even. Yeah, and you really shouldn't be. Look, I, I, I would honestly say, obviously I feel as a, as a, as a Western trained physician that it is very, very important. But I also recognize that some of you out there are like, is it really for me? If you're, if you're 17 and, and healthy and you're feeling like, I don't want this, am I going to kind of beat you up as much as I would one of my patients who has COPD and diabetes and hypertension when I say, no, this is for you. So it can't be a one size fits all because when you start doing that, Kara, you start kind of leaving people by the wayside and all of it should really be based in love and health. And in order to do that, you have to kind of understand where the other person's coming from. You talked about supplements being one of those conversations, the difficult ones for people to talk to their doctor about even. Is there a certain list that you stick to as far as it does, does it depend on who you're talking to? Well, actually for everyone, if there's one thing we leave today and we talk about a supplement that all of us should be on, it's vitamin D. It's not about the bone health. It's about what vitamin D does for our immune support. Look, vitamin D is important for 2,000 genes for a reason. And so that's why I say it's important to know your levels and you want them between 40 and 60. I also mentioned magnesium, which is also important just for our energy 
molecules, the ATP that we all learned in health class, and also omega-3. Omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, it's fish oil. I tend to like to get that from sardines, but not everyone is necessarily a sardine fan. But my point is omega-3, magnesium, and vitamin D should be a part of everyone's sort of at-home toolkit to stay well. You're a concierge doctor, is that right? I am. Can you share what that is? I think, you know, that's a really good option for people as well who want that more personal connection. Yeah, so, you know, when you talk about a concierge physician, it's just like a concierge at a hotel where they kind of stare you to the best restaurants or they're always there for you. And that's what I'm able to provide. And during the pandemic, it was even more important to where I make house calls. That's the big base of what I do, everyone, and also provide education by, by teleconference and phone call. But the point of that is, during the coronavirus, a lot of doctor's offices were closed. And so that close, important relationship is something that being a concierge physician allows me to grow. I can be with the patient for an hour and have enough time to kind of get into their soul to really get to the healing that I want to get to. Yeah, and especially in their own home, you feel a little more comfortable. Dr. Ken, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me on. Stay well and stay healthy, everyone. You too. Thank you. And we'll have more information about, about Dr. Red Cross. There's his book right there, Bond. We'll have that information as well on our website at khcu.com. But don't go anywhere. Afternoon Live will be right back. Mm -hmm.